I've never seen work like it, and I've seen a lot. I mean, that king's costume and the queen and some of these chocks and whole canes with these masks on it. It's, wow, that's amazing. To set all the different tones that we wanted to use, we made samples of all these colors from natural vegetables and animals that the Mayans used. For example, this beautiful red sienna comes from rojo cochinilla, and it gives you a variety of degrees of this kind of red. We also used indigo blue, so many hues in one single feather. And we actually were able to recreate a green that comes from bladder of animals. We're making costumes that nobody ever done. The prints that you see have to be recreated because they did it freehand. We did about 50 different designs, patterns and embroidery that they have from those times. Every single thing that you see in this movie is hand sewn, handmade. You can't get any shortcuts because we shoot in five cameras all the time. It has to be perfect. The Mayans used a lot of jade. It was a symbol of wealth and happiness and trade and trust. <laughs> but for logistic reasons, we couldn't have all this made out of jade. So we have to learn how to paint all these light materials into jade, just hand painting them. All these bits are wood, and uh, we have to make it look like if it was jade. And it looks beautiful, just like jade. The Mayas viewed status through the use of jade, exotic commodities like shell and mother of pearl. One of the most obvious things was the use of jade ear spools. So it would perforate the earlobe, a small piece of jade in, and then gradually expand that until it was able to accommodate a large ornament. Stem from the fact that Mel, as an artist and as a filmmaker, is at a place where he can take those chances. Some of the things that you will see in this film, you will never have. The costume that I wear is so mythic. It belongs in every culture of a warrior society. But as soon as I put all of that leather armor on, I completely just you know, become this character. It's like, oh my God, what is this? Is this an animal or a man? There's no work required other than to wear the costume. Raul, signal those guys to move out. It's like Mel says, you don't have to be scary. You are scary. And try to look just straight out with your face. I mean, it is so, that's ominous. This is not a normal movie. It is a big makeup and hair movie. Te puede maquillar así, por ejemplo. Sí. Por la noche. Sí. Te gustaría. Sí. My department is quite big. Probably it's the biggest I ever had in my life, like 250 people. Details are so important. Even though you don't see it, you feel it. This has really been a big challenge. They start to see every single drawing. What they used to have for ears and earrings, for nose bridges, for tattoos, and everything which is makeup. Our first thinking was, uh, how can we make the public understand who they are? Everything they used to do in, uh, in their life was for the gods. In fact, every single tattoo is a sign of uh, a religion. They had a concept of afterlife and a concept of life as it related to afterlife. The behavior that they'd exhibit because of that, you know. They had a concept of paradise and damnation and, and sin.
village people. I mean, people that live with nothing. We've been very minimal with tattoos and things. Okay, cut. With the middle class, I went a little more tattoos, more air tattoos. We also get rich people and high class people. But then when you put all together, you see this difference between. Each person looks different. You've got these beautiful ladies with the jade teeth who are like using their fans and laughing and smiling. And you can tell that there's something different about them. Maybe you say something to her and you laugh. The material we use for the earlobes is silicon because the earlobes are stretched. I could not use something hard. I need to have uh, movement. Another very important thing was the Mayan profile. The real Mayans uh, have uh, curl nose. It is a particular Mayan nose, the original Mayan look. That's great. That was one of the first questions. Do you mind wearing a prosthetic nose? All the makeup, the scarifications, the tattoos, the various piercings that were applied to the actors every single day. Morning after morning, these, these busloads of extras would come in and there were rows and rows of makeup chairs with, with mirrors and little red lights above them. Every time a new... There was something very exciting in terms of being able to come up with weapons that people had never seen before. Simon Atherton is a world-class armorer. Every film you've ever seen that you think the weapons in it are cool, Simon Atherton probably supplied the weapons. Yeah, you got it. That's amazing. That's definitely. He's a favorite of mine, particularly when it comes to primitive weaponry. So you were going for Fish Hunter, right? And Rudy got by you. It's like pig and farmer, you know? So you're chasing him back. I have worked with Noel before. I worked with him on Braveheart. It was one of the first big feature films I ever did. He doesn't just limit his activity to, you know, being the armor or the weapons guy or the designer. He, he's really creative with some of these things. For example, a frog and some blow darts. He says, what's this? And he has this little dart that he made, you know, with some Q-tips and a, you know, straight pin. And he just grabs a piece of paper and rolls it up and goes, Pff! and it just whap. And he says, what if he uses a leaf? And there's whimsy in it. He came to this film really wanting to strike that perfect balance between historical accuracy and things that just looked cool. First of all, you've got to figure out what tools they've got and what materials they've got. From that, you can figure out what kind of weapons they'd have. We knew that the Mayans didn't have any metal. What they used was obsidian, which is a very hard, very sharp kind of glass mineral that would cut through anything. The edge on it is just horrific. And then that made a fantastic sword. This is an obsidian sword. Not many of these things have survived. Ah! And this would be a very sharp cutting edge. It's got blades, obsidian yeah. blades on it. Yeah. These things were studded with obsidian and could inflict some serious damage. And it was brutal. It was amazing. It was glass is going to shatter, but it doesn't. They also used that kind of material for their sacrificial knives. They could cut and slash, get inside a man's ribcage within seconds. And if you imagine that's the last thing that you see as it's coming towards you. In this film, people aren't attacking only. They, they're going out to take prisoners. So we had to invent weapons that not only killed people, but stunned people. So you'll see some of the weapons don't have obsidian on both sides, like this sword. They will have it on one side. And that would be to inflict a stunning blow rather than a killing blow. These are the weapons and techniques that the Mayans had. It was absolutely accurate historically. Here they were being seen for the first time on film. As you look at the quantity and the extent and the caliber of the artistic merit that the Maya had, it reads a sense of respect, a sense of awe, and a sense of understanding.
from the moment the film starts to the moment it ends, you feel like you're transported into this world that you are seeing very much primarily through visual means of communication. And what ends up happening is that you buy it more. You really believe these people. You think that those are the actual Mayans and we just took a camera and happened to shoot this fantastic action story in the real world. <laughs> to pull all these things together into a film with huge moving parts is amazing to watch. That's what filmmaking is about. That it was a very exciting thing to look at, that it looked dynamic, that it was odd. Something so strange to look at, what people thought of as beautiful or what they wished to adorn. And, you know, quite frankly, uh, one started off with that, boy, why would they think of that? But by the time you were finished looking at them, they were beautiful. I mean, it was just like, okay, I know why they did that. It had this aesthetic that began to appeal to me. And it looks beautiful on film. And it fills you with wonder.